Hello, hello, people of the world and the internet. We are the Gatekeepers. Welcome to our show about fencing. I am one of your hosts, Dan. And I am Billy. How's it going? How's it going? We are just now back from our Thanksgiving break here. And uh, we're going to chit chat a little bit about that. A little bit about kind of working in between the holidays before and after. Coming back and in and out through all of it. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit of vinyl at the end of that, right, Billy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, how was your Thanksgiving? Let's just start off with that. How was your Thanksgiving, Dan? Man, it was pretty rad. It was pretty rad. Um, had a bunch of the family down. My brother, his uh, significant other, my sister, his uh, or shirt, her, the, 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 <laughs> her husband. Um, they all came to town from uh, South Florida and up from Virginia and North Carolina and everything. And at a big old feast, my brother is a phenomenal cook, man. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. The second he said, I'm cooking, I said, I'll take a step back because I can't cook like you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not man. at all. Do you guys, have, was, uh, ooh, you guys so have fried turkey, baked turkey? Just regular old baked turkey. Oh, okay. Yeah. All some right. ham, some collard greens, some uh, baked mac and cheese. Stuffing, carrots, potatoes, you know, the whole nice. greens, beans, nice. potatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> tomatoes, tomatoes, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> good, man. Good, man. Yeah, so how was yours? Um, I was good. We went to um like Georgia, as yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Um, took the fishing poles down there and uh plan of going saltwater fishing because I'm a huge saltwater fisher. Yeah. Not actually a like a freshwater fisher. Uh, like until now. Especially um, living like here in Pensacola, it's yeah, it's so close for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, on actual uh, like Thanksgiving Day, uh, we ate it like I think we were supposed to get there at two, and we ate it like four because the turkey had to fry and all that <laughs> stuff, and yeah. all the rest of the stuff had to be made. And um, it was like one twenty, and the wife was like, "Hey." We go load up our cooler with beer and everything and get everything that we need to drink. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I get, I did not load the cooler, by the way. I just, <laughs> I got so much shit for that. I just kind of threw all of the beer in the back of, oh, no. Um, oh, no. Like the SUV. And we got to where we're going. She was like, where's the cooler and the ice? I was like, oh, the cooler's right there, but I did not see ice. She's like, there's like four bags of ice in the freezer. Um, but uh, anyways, I'm getting down on a rabbit hole on that. But uh, I got done doing that and I saw my fishing poles and Ooh. the truck. And I was like, "Ooh," because there's a front yard pond where we were staying. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know what? There's already a swim bait attached to this one. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go throw it a couple of times. And um, threw it once, threw it twice. It was like maybe my fifth throw. And I caught this big ass bass. I have never caught a large mouse bass. Um ever and i was like this is fun so i ended up catching like 10 or 12 of them <clears throat> um i let them all go because that was the deal if i could fish the pond the, you know, yeah, you got to put them back they had to go back yeah. but anyways that was fun um and uh so we did uh my wife's father did a fried turkey there was also a baked no a smoked ham that was amazing um, you know, all the well, no, not all the normals. There was oyster stuffing that I thought was gonna be good, but it was very not good at all. That sounds good, but oh, I love oysters. Yeah, so too. I was like, Oh man, give me a big old scoop. I took one bite and I was like, I, gotta get to the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, let me just hold this in my mouth until I get to the bathroom and spit it out so nobody sees me, and I'm not, not I'm just not gonna touch it for the rest of the time. Um, but other than that, it, like everything was awesome. Um had a nice relaxing time, didn't do much, only like really left the house to go to her grandparents, which is like three houses down the street, which is not far. But you know, didn't leave much. Um, just kind of relaxed and I 
fish nice. the pond a lot every single day. Nice. nice. Every single day. Yeah, um, I had the opposite of relaxing. Uh, other than the social, you know, gathering with the family, that was always fun. But uh, it was a lot of moving, a lot of packing everything and uh, unpacking everything and picking heavy things up and putting heavy things down. <laughs> we got new couches, washer and dryer. I saw that. I saw oh. that. All that. So good time to move right at like Black Friday. Right at Wee. Black Friday. Get everything everybody, you need for free. I just went on Marketplace. Everybody's getting new stuff on sale, getting rid of their old stuff and just like, hey, take it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. going to throw That's it away. And all of it's things. like brand new. Yeah. Got a Roomba for 50 bucks. Dude, brand I'm new from this 90 year old dude that didn't know how to turn it off. Didn't know how to turn it off. No, I got there. He had a, he had a flip phone. <laughs> and every time he, he called his daughter because she got it for him. <laughs> It's like an eight hundred dollar room or something, no something crazy. I think they're maybe like three hundred now, but okay, when it first came like, out, it was they were like, that expensive anymore. It like self cleans itself, mm -hmm. so it has a separate disposal unit that it vacuums up and then goes and dumps mm -hmm. it in the other one. It's like the top tier Roomba thing. Um, and I get to this dude's house and he's like, "Yeah, you could like pick it up, whatever, yada yada yada," and then it's like. But you, uh, you got to figure out how to turn it off because I don't know how to turn this fucking thing off. And every time I call my daughter, she's like, oh, just download the app. And uh, I got a flip phone and I can't download apps was basically what he was telling me. He's like, if you could turn this damn thing off, you can you can take it away. I was like, deal. I just picked it up. And when you pick it up off the ground, they turn off. And he didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a great deal. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um. My first day back after sitting on my ass for four days was pretty rough. I was pretty sore. Dude, I, I was not sore anymore because I had so much time rest. Time to rest, I should say. And I was just happy I'm not picking up couches or furniture or anything oh, like that. Oh, well, yeah. Bro, I mean, so I guess you I were actually there, doing something, though. I wasn't, I wasn't I was locked in the shit. zone, dude. I, I wasn't was like, anything the whole time off. Yeah, I was in the zone the first day back. Yeah. Yeah, today that root was killing me. Killing me. <laughs> oh, hey Every man, me and you were in the same time. boat. Well, we were in we were in the same waters in different boats because uh, them six edge pickets today were they 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 were garbage. I wanted to throw them all all in the trash if we hadn't yeah bought so many of them. They look real nice. Yeah. When they're by themselves, but when you put them up next to each other, you're like, "Holy shit!" I'm right, right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I guess we can just dive right into it. So yeah, man. You know, we're gonna get into vinyl today. Um, vinyl privacy, to be exact. Yeah. So uh, it's brush on the head. Yeah. Right before uh, right before break, we did two neighbors back to back. So that was fun. That was a lot of gates. That was a lot of gates. Yeah. That was a lot of gates. One neighbor had three gates. <clears throat> the other neighbor had two gates. I was like, man. A lot of gates when we were loading up all the material. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so, you know, we're going to go through, um, I'm going to just, just uh, start with the whole, uh, like, dig and set method. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, here in Florida, we don't have a frost line to go any deeper than, like I've stated in other episodes uh so you know dig a 30 inch hole eight inches around 10 inches around um set your post like normal we're on uh, most of your vinyl is uh six foot uh we did just get done all of that vinyl that we did was eight foot centers <clears throat> uh but that's more of the stronger commercial grade stuff they have uh the little steel stiffeners in the the uh my bottom rail those destroyed our saw blades. Oh man, we went through. Uh, I think we went because I had to go buy them all. I think I went through like we went through three saw blades per saw, and we had two saws out there for so, six saw blades and yeah, six saw blades, and they were no use. They wouldn't even cut plastic anymore after that. <laughs> no, they were terrible, <laughs> <laughs> just screaming at yeah, you. Yeah, it was so loud too. Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta cut it once they drill down, and it's just I was the like worst ear piercing noise, and it's not even going through. We were done super thin vinyl. We were done driving, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep my helmet on and just keep the earmuffs on because I was like, this is loud shit, man. Yeah. 
I mean, it's it it is like legit loud. Yeah. But um. So again, we use uh, the Mr. Fence Tools Equalizer to get everything set up um, as far as post spacing. So you know, we will take out the six foot long equalizer. You could also do the math and you know mark your string line or do the VV way, which I still want to actually go and learn. Um, he's what is this way? He's explained it to me through text message, but you gotta you gotta get through mildly broken English, and then then also be able to comprehend it. So you know, I'm not gonna go into it. It's he marks a string line basically for his heights and everything, and huh. is um, like spacing like every single time, like on every job, like that's how he does his. Uh, but uh, we use the uh, six foot equalizer, and um, if I were to be digging a set in this, I would be using uh, the Bobcat, and I'd be augering out the holes first. Um, same kind of deal as the wood, you know. Start on the left hand wing of the house, uh, work my way to uh, that corner post, and then down the sideline, back down the back line, back up, and then back around, back in our old, yeah, a little clockwise circle yep. for uh, for working in backyards. <clears throat> but after we do that, um, it it it's going to be definite two bags of concrete, um, you know. Set them to height. We dry pack stuff um, whenever we are using concrete. So we're going to dry pack it, and then we're going to add all of our bottom rails. And then once all the bottom rails are installed, we're going to set everything to height uh, using the thumper and the protector block. And uh, we'll talk about that here later yeah. in our tool talk. So we're doing it with concrete because I haven't done vinyl with concrete. I've done you know very little with concrete. I've just digging set predominantly uh or not digging set sorry uh the driven system yeah. predominantly i should say but when you're doing it with with concrete um you only do the bottom rail when you set your heights yeah nice yeah yeah well i guess because obviously setting the heights with well concrete in there and well because when it's dry packed you have to wrap your arms around the post you can't you can't um like do that once all of it's not yeah. all of the pickets are in there. It, yeah. You are not moving that thing. I'm like I'm telling you. Um so we'll put all of all of our bottom rails in and you know we'll get the nice flow going because it's the same flow as the top rail, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, yeah. I'm like when it's done. But yeah, we'll do um the bottoms first. And I also should mention if uh your vinyl supplier is not using keyholes in the bottom of the post uh take the extra 30 minutes to an hour and have somebody cut two by two keyholes in the bottom of the post actually more like four by four keyholes three by three um because vi concrete is known not to adhere to vinyl a lot so if there's that keyhole in there the concrete goes straight it's, through it. It's it going to lock it through. Yeah. As opposed um, to it just slipping out once yes. that concrete dries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, that is a, is a very important process to remember for that. Um, is, you know, if you have a one-man digging operation, that could be the other man's uh, my job when you're digging. It's just, hey, man, cut keyholes. Or if you have a helper, on hey, man, cut keyholes. Just, yeah, yeah just... Simple Cut as take keyholes. a router in there. Yeah, and just do, 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 do. like it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it's going in the ground. Yeah, no one's going to see it. It just has to have the 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 concrete lock into it. Yeah, yeah. It. So, um, you know, once you get your height set, um, and you do your ins and outs, uh, you're going to do your pretty much major ins and ends, um, your major back and forth, your major ins and outs, then and then once you get done putting everything back in, you're gonna go do some minor adjustments afterwards. Uh, but once you do that, you know, and you get your um your U channels up after that, it's gonna be uh three self tappers per U channel. Um, and that is per manufacturer specifications. And it, like if you don't do that, that could void your warranty. There's been a lot of talk about that, but I have I, like I have actually talked to yeah 
for the U channels, you're saying? Yeah. 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 So I've actually talked to a couple people. I really don't see why you would skip it, to be honest. It just looks so much better. Yeah. I can't imagine yeah. seeing those little like tabs on the one side. Well, or seeing cut sides without it. Well, if you don't screw them in and maybe during like a hard freeze, it all contracts. Oh, would, so they still put the U channels. They just don't screw them. They just don't screw them, but they would be stuck uh, to the pickets. So they would squeeze in and you'd be able to see gaps on the side. Yeah. So, if, um, like, so if they're screwed in, all you see is the pickets moving in. And, you know, they're most of your U channels are like an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. So, I mean, there's not going to be that much. But yeah, play, um, like for it to like fall out or anything. But, uh, once you do that, and we do cut every section, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's just faster for us than to lay it out and to do all the math and to figure out where we can have and a no cut the, section fence. It's just, it's just way quicker. Yeah. And then you also get stuck with, yeah, one single panel that's, yeah, slightly smaller than all the rest. Absolutely. Um, if but you don't cut them all. Yeah. So uh, we do cut all of our rails. Um, and most of the time they're within like four or five inches of six foot uh, like spacing. And then um, put your bottom rails in, you channels up, you start picketing, and you're going to always start with uh, like ladies first. And anybody who does vinyl knows it's um, like it's tongue and groove. So mm -hmm. they lock together. So the so, groove goes first. So you're going to do ladies first, and then you're going to start picketing. And then when you get to the end, when in, you need a rip picket, you're going to measure at the bottom only because the bottom is going to be the plum part. So um, you're going to measure the bottom, and then you're going to rip your picket. You're going to take that last picket out that you put in for the measuring. You're going to put your rip picket back in, and then you're going to wiggle it down. And it should just wiggle right on down. Um, and then after that, you're going to go back and you're going to do the same thing that you did with the bottom rail. You're just going to cut your bottom rail and you're going to put your top rail in. Yep. And um, it's a lot easier if you put the side without the notches that you've cut in first, slide it all the way in, and then uh, like slide your notch side in. Knock the notch side in. So that way you're not fighting against the post and, you know, it's not making a whole lot of work for yourself doing some more ins and outs and after that and working smarter not harder yes sir that's what it's all that's about it. that that's is it. what it's all about um speaking of that so one thing that uh we did differently on this one specifically that i i haven't been on a vinyl job with us that we've done it i know you said you uh you had seen it being done before i don't think i don't know if you did but the uh the rivets those rivets, they just everything about them. I like. So, I like the rivets. I like the rivets for the U channels. We did uh, the rivets for the U channels. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, it's about the same time because if it's me, I'm gonna start my top and bottom self tappers in the U channel on the ground first. Yeah. So that way it doesn't walk all over the place, and I can just press and go i'm already through one piece of plastic it won't walk on me yeah so for me having to pre-drill for the rivets was the same exact thing yeah um now I, I will say i like the um so one of the things that i've noticed with uh when you you know put the put the screw into the u-channel you've got a little tip hanging up and sometimes it may not be perfect because you're trying to put it in plastic on the floor, like on, in most cases, grass. And um, so sometimes it could be slightly cocked one way or the other. And the one thing I liked about doing it with the, um, the rivets itself was hold up the U channel, drill straight through it, put the rivet in. And we have an air riveter, which uh, I really like, by the way. I was about thick. to, like, I was about to start talking about that. Like, I. I guess I just wasn't a fan of it because I wasn't a fan of that basket weave fence. Not, a, not yeah, how it so looks. That's the first time I, you did use that. I one. wasn't a fan of it, like installing it. It, 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 it was the most fucking beautiful so fence tedious. that we've ever that that like we've I've ever put my hands on. But I do not ever want to do one again, ever, yeah. like ever, ever. Not that way, at least. Not that. Not it that was, method. It was 
so tedious and so time consuming. And we thought it was going to be like what, like a three a day couple job days, that like turned into almost yeah. a month. Yeah. And it was, dude, dude, I had, we had Clint on payroll for 39 hours of planing boards. Yeah. That is a, that it's is a two, five day one by sixes that meshed up. Yeah. Kind of planed ends on each end so that they meshed up to kind of almost, almost be a seamless board. And then there was a wood glue in between them and the rivets thrown in. The and mountain it's... of sawdust after he was done was, it was like unbelievable. It, like, was a... it was like a three by three sawdust. It looked like a pile of leaves that you just would like run and jump in. Yeah. It looked like one of those giant mounds of uh, of ants and stuff that you see on like National <laughs> Geographic with the ant here. Yeah, yeah. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Yeah, scoop. just trying to trying to suck out the ants from it. It looks like one of those ant pile mounds. Yeah. But yeah, it was like two foot tall, three foot wide, just mound of sawdust. And it was just yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Everything totally about was. that job was a nightmare. But hey, man, it's done. And, it, and then it, it looks phenomenal. It came out. But hey. So damn nice. Using that riveter on the vinyl though was clutch. Yeah. Yeah, because the air riveter, you just yeah. And um whenever we were up in Indiana, uh, we had used a cordless riveter. I don't even know what brand it was, but um it was cool. Like a battery powered? It was a battery powered one. I took a DeWalt battery, but it was not a, a DeWalt. Okay. Um, but um it kept getting like it got jammed a lot. Like way more than our. I've only had riveter. I've only had ours with the air the air riveter. I've only had a jam on me one time, and it was because I was just trying to go too fast, and it was it was kind of my mistake. What happened is the like the teeth that open up and they pinch and pull back, pinch and pull back. Well, the pin wasn't fully seated in the center; it was kind of cocked to the side. So when it pinched, it got stuck on the side of the two teeth and because they're aluminum rivets, so they won't like rust or anything. Um, aluminum, super soft. And it just like mushroom. I had to take the whole thing apart to get that out of there. I gotcha. I've only got it jammed twice and I was probably doing the same thing. I was probably in a hurry because I was just I, like I was on the basket weave. Yeah. Uh, like when I jammed it. Same. Same. But um, full autopilot. <laughs> You know, I really, really, really liked the rivets for the back side of the gate hinges that don't hit the stiffeners. Yeah. Because I feel like it pulled in and held way better than the self tappers they oh, give you. Because, 100%. like, I feel like if you just do one little tiny ugga dugga too much, it's You're just, ripping through them. Like, it's just pulling right back out. And, um, and the other thing, as they clearance, don't, clearance. I was about to say the same thing. Like they don't stick out so far. Those bolt heads stick out almost a quarter of an inch. Yeah. And uh, the thing is with the hinges, unless you want a big hinge gap on your gates, because the gate um, hinges they they require you have a bolt on the yeah. inside. Yeah. When we did them with the rivets, mm -hmm. you can get fully flush and all the way tightened back. So you have no hinge gap and you're sitting at a flat plane across the whole, yeah. the whole line. Yeah. It, and it, it was nice. it's super clean where you can get it that tight in there because there's, it's something that what, like a 16th of an inch. Yeah. Sitting out as opposed to a quarter of an inch. Yeah. It was, it, it was, it was good. I it liked good. it. I, uh, it just look better. They look a whole lot better, especially whenever you have proper. all that black hardware. It was just like a nice little silver touch, just yeah. just little small silver touches. I was like, oh man, that looks that looks really good. Clean. <clears throat> and because the gate, they they the gates themselves with vinyl, um, they're put together with rivets. So everything having, you know, if you had more rivets across the whole thing, it just looks nice. Yeah. It all looks yeah. uniform. Yeah. Speaking of gates, yeah, um, we're going to talk about gate bracing for vinyl. Ooh, kind of important for the, especially for the five foot, six foot. Kind of really important for just about all of them to be anything honest, racked. Yeah, anything racked, or I mean, even or if even not the racked, other ones, they I mean, can 
sag and slash over time yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially if you're using a um like aluminum frame one, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, vinyl aluminum soft, vinyl's vinyl. Mm-hmm. You know, but um little quiz for you i know you know uh what's the bracing for vinyl uh so the bracing is metal no 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 and no. what like in what form yeah you take tension and compression oh, okay right? yeah, yeah 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 so it's metal um and because it is metal because metal and wood obviously you do you do slightly different um metal would be under tension while wood <laughs> <laughs> absolutely 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 so um the braces that we get i really like to use they're extremely easy to use they're basically uh two metal tubes and one slightly bigger than the other and the other one slides down and then sleeve over the top of each other yeah and then it's got a little carriage bolt for both of your corners that yep. is on the back of a metal plate yeah and once you put it on and you get it racked you put the self tappers that it comes with in and you take your ratchet strap off and boom it's done yeah yeah i love to use those ones because one, you don't have to cut them and cut to no. fit your angle and no, no it's it's yeah. better. it's so quick so easy um one little tip i tra- i did pick up from you to make it look you know nicer overall excuse me um once you get your two uh brackets on where you put the carriage bolts in them self tap them to the two corners yeah and you uh size out you know thread on your little tubes on both ends um put in your self tappers to the screw or to the uh to the bracing and then take it off flip it around put it back on and I think that that is so smooth yeah. because you don't see those bolts. It just looks like it's it is made nice. to be there. And it's just, it is, it is, it is it's, very it's nice. Beautiful. It is very it's nice. Beautiful. And then you take the ratchet strap off. And then, yeah. And then you take the ratchet strap off. <laughs> oh, right, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, we'll get into the driven game too. I mean, it's really not much that that much different like except for just driving posts no. and putting on donuts yeah so um you know that was it for concrete digging set um and then for the driven game you know um two and three eights eight foot pipe schedule 40 um same thing uh six foot equalizer um driving four in leaving four out and uh we, we use the adjustable donuts um mm-hmm. And then uh, what you're going to do is once you have all of your posts driven, uh, you're going to go to your corners and you're going to do your corner donuts first. 45 degrees. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot the most crucial step out of all of this. Dig your pilot holes. Oh, yes. Before you actually. Dig your pilot holes. Before you put the post in the ground. Yeah. Dig your pilot holes because. The height of the donut needs to be dug out first. Because if you don't do that you are not getting it set to height after you put them rails in because they will not go past that donut. Nope. So that is the most crucial step that I forgot. And I have done it <laughs> in the field. But hey, 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 I still built that fence, took down that fence, and rebuilt that fence without doing heights in one day. And I bet you won't forget that again. Never again. That was that was rough. You were out there for that, weren't you? Was that the the tan textured? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was our actual first sold. Yeah, that was uh, a nightmare. Like no dig. Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't a nightmare. It wasn't that bad. We're just having to take them all out and then. Yeah, them. I mean, we did have to take the entire fence part. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm fence. saying. It's not really like a nightmare in terms of like it was hard work. It was just <laughs> it, like it, it was. Oh, the biggest thing was, was we noticed it, and it was oh fuck. The biggest thing was was getting all the top rails out. <laughs> yep because they were so tight in there <laughs> i was like oh man you know it's almost like back in the digging set days whenever we would like hit like a rock on the very edge of the hole where we needed to go so we would have to dig out this giant hole and dump like 300 pounds of concrete You'd be like 
I feel sorry for the fencer next time they have to pull this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like that corner post of the uh, Indian burial ground one that we did the other day. It's it's not actually an Indian burial ground, but it yeah, it had no. to have been cursed, man. That's rough. Five posts That's and rough. a full bag of concrete, like still in the bag, was placed in the corner post. Well, you know, I mean, the no dig game is going to come with its challenges, and to be honest with yeah. you if you really sit down and you think about it, it's the same challenges you would face in a dig game. Yeah. Cause I'm sorry, unless you have a dandy digger, you're not digging the concrete. Mm -mm. It's not, I wish we could, like, I wish we could drive through concrete. That'd be dope. But, um, I mean, the slowest part about, the no dig is going to be a tear out and rebuild. And that's just because you, you have no idea what you're going to be up against mm -hmm. as Either far as means. soil conditions, what was cut and left in the ground. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, back to the no dig vinyl. Um, so, um, you know, once you get all of your post driven and uh, you're ready for your donuts, you're going to go to your corners and you're going to face all of the donuts in, toward each other at a 45 degree angle, like kind of making an X in the backyard. What is true on an X? Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. And then you're going to use your concrete pen nailer, your self tappers, however you choose to do it. We use a concrete pen nailer here and you're going to attach your top ones. After that, you're going to pop a string on all of your top donuts and when you do that, you plumb all of the rest of the top donuts to the string. And then you do three nails per donut. And then when you're done with that, you come back and you take a four foot, five foot level. I would use a five foot, just a little bit easier to, to handle. And you're going to plumb your bottom donuts to the top. Um, and then when you're done with that, you know, your sleeve should already be cut by your helper or pre-cut in the shop and you just sleeve them over and it's uh business as usual at that point. Yep. Um, the only thing you really have to be careful with is when you're putting in your, 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 um, U channels, if you're using screws, don't screw that U channel into the top donut because when you go to go do your heights, you can't do your heights, you can't do your heights because it's stuck into the donut. Yeah, just keep a mental note of kind of yeah. where it is. What I would after I did it one time. Yeah. Um, it was like, but, okay, well, they're about here on my body. Don't put that screw about here yeah. on my body. Yeah. But, you know, I, you know, I mean, like you live and you learn. And, yep. um, you know, again, rivets, they're, they're freaking great. Yeah. They're the great only the thing we had any issues with was uh when we did have to pull one post or like one post sleeve if you will uh, oh uh, yeah it does come in uh yeah. contact with the donut it and it makes it a little mm -hmm. difficult to get it off of the donut you just had to drill them out yeah, yeah, yeah. we just yeah. happened to break to drill them out. and it all was... of the drill bits of that size yeah 10 minutes beforehand but it was still in the spot that was the um u channel so it was going to get covered up so we just kind of took yeah a, yeah you just to put a little bigger bigger one there. or just yeah. swap spots but it ended up working out it ended up working out great they both um, came out both houses came out beautiful yeah absolutely and that tan vinyl looks phenomenal yeah um everybody walking by was like oh my god uh, like I wish it was the texture that we used the first time I really I really liked that texture I like the look of the texture um, I understand both of their uh, ideas with it. The cleaning wise, um, I've never owned a vinyl fence, so I've never cleaned a vinyl fence. Um, but my thought process is with the smooth texture, it just washes right off. The textured, or I guess the no texture would wash right off. And the, uh, you know, I couldn't tell you. The textured one, I feel like it would hold more things. Whether you know, it be dirt have... or something splashing up, I don't know. I love the look of it, and I, I think it looks way better. But I don't know how it would be with cleaning. Um, <laughs> if anybody out there does have a, you know, textured vinyl fence, I would imagine it'd be the same. I mean, you know, whenever you're, 
I would imagine it'd be the same because you know, whenever you're pressure washing a vinyl fence, you don't want to get too close and like <laughs> break right through the wall. Well, look at Kool Aid, man. Not just that, but it also has a um like UV coating on it. <laughs> so like you don't want to like break all the UV coating. So I would imagine you just you just make sure that some sort of outdoor bleach would be okay per the manufacturer spec yeah. and just kind of soft wash it off. I would make sense. I, I have no idea. I mean, I've I have pressure washed a lot of things, you know, being young and just buying, buying like a pressure washer and be like, let me go wash everything. Yeah. Um, but I've never I've never pressure washed a vinyl fence. I couldn't tell you. Speaking of uh pressure washing, completely off topic from fences. Have you seen that guy on TikTok that does uh art with pressure washers? Not at all. No, he goes out to uh like driveways and stuff and uh people just pay like him. random people drive no 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 okay i was like no shit you like come out for work the next morning you're like what the hell that's a beautiful picture but what the <laughs> hell <laughs> <laughs> um no but he uh he gets he gets paid by people to uh basically pressure wash murals into their driveway filth and it looks really cool completely really does topic. it really does it because my neighbors like pressure. I, I like the art of it. Like, okay. I don't know how it looks from far away. I've only seen it like the pictures that he makes. Like, he's really he's a really good artist. I don't know if I would ever do that. I always mess around and, you know, draw uh, inappropriate things in my driveway while I'm in the middle of pressure washing. But I obviously go <laughs> over the top of it. Next door neighbor Karen's a bitch. Just pressure wash across my driveway. And then I go and clean off the whole thing. Oh. I don't actually have a next door neighbor who's a Karen. Um, my next door neighbor is Corey. Uh, shout out to him. Hey, Corey, I see you're watching. Yeah. Oh, feel the resistance, feel the resistance in the screw. The screw. Interesting. Can you we might put catch those, a charge from that. Can we put those up there? I think. I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, there's Corey. <laughs> there's Corey. Um, Appreciate you watching, bud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I'll see you live and in person, though. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Um, I might actually see him tonight if he's uh, out in his garage. Yeah, he usually hangs out there. It's a very yeah. chill spot. He's got a couch out there. It's, you know, I would hang out in my garage if I had a garage. Dude, you could see the whole. Uh, you can see the whole sky at yeah. night. It's peaceful. The neighborhood's quiet. Um, when I just moved, I'm no longer his next door neighbor. Unfortunately, it's kind of upsetting. I don't know kind my next door neighbors yet. But you do have to go pick your kid up though, right? No, he's no. at my house. Oh, he is. Mother in law's at my house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, she's babysitting and she's staying at the house uh to babysit right now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. He was asleep when I left. Yeah. So she's just chilling, <laughs> watching TV on our big old TV. I got that set up right away. Yeah. Right away. Gotta bring the uh sixty five inch over and how'd that stud finder work out that I let so you borrow? There are no studs. It's concrete. <laughs> so it was just beeping like crazy. How'd like, you what find that the out? Fuck is going on? Uh, I just drilled right into. It. <laughs> just went full scent. Well, I know how to patch up a hole. We're good. Uh, it's good. Yeah, that it's like good. that uh, wood slat board bullshit on the wall, and uh, about a. Three quarters of an inch behind that is solid concrete. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I uh, temporarily put it up before I go and get some proper concrete drilling apparatuses. Yeah. Uh, you're going to need properly put it up. You're going to need. Um, I used to use them all the time uh, whenever I was uh, like running conduit. <clears throat> uh, but they sell these little things that are like concrete anchors and you have to have a punch to set them hmm. and you only set them so far and they're threaded on like one end uh -huh. so you put them in the concrete where you want and you only drill so far and you take the punch and it like spreads out on the concrete and then you just drill your screw right into it nice nice yeah go get some of those those are good yeah and time to hit up uh lowe's tomorrow and see if they yeah you're gonna need yourself a uh Big hammer drill bit though. Big guy. Like, I'm assuming like a half inch. Three eighths. 
half inch, okay. something like that. I think we used to use three eighths, to be honest with you. I think that was a standard size. No. I mean, the TV's only the one in the bedroom is because that's for the one in the bedroom. The other one, the big, big one is uh, one of the bedroom is 50 inches, but the other one's in the living room. I have a uh, it's like an entertainment console thing. Oh, there's a and, uh, there's a computer monitor there. Yeah. Uh, but it's like this weird entertainment thing where I could put like, you know, the game consoles and everything like that. But then it has like a back arm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the whole thing's like nice dark wood and brass. It's I used to have one of those kind of cool. Um, I just like the look of the wood in the metal. So I was like, yeah, let's get that. And then let's base the whole room off of that <laughs> because I like the dark wood with like kind of coppery brass color. Yeah. So now I have themed whatever room that is in off of that thing <laughs> from there on out. It's pretty cool. I got this super rustic, like antique looking table, like a coffee table that yeah. also lifts up, but it's got these big old five inch roller, like wheels on the bottom. Nice. Yeah. yeah like actual casters or they're yeah, like like, rollers. Yeah. Like casters. But okay. Like industrial casters. Okay. And I don't, they, they just look like they're from like, the 1800s they're new it's not anything like it's not old or vintage it just looks cool and looks vintage and i was like and that fits with the other thing too well just the paint of it oh uh, yeah yeah it's nice nice yeah. nice so um today on uh tool talk we're gonna run through the thumper and the protector block which is uh i kind of briefly like hinted on that whenever we were talking about vinyl. Indeed. Indeed we did. So uh, the thumper is going to be a uh, 35 pound angled dead blow hammer. And we like to call it the what? What do we call it? A cartoon hammer, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've called it like a different name every time I picked it up. Uh, I didn't know if one was the specific one. I was yeah. Like, I've man. called it a million things. Yeah, man. It's the cartoon hammer. Um, but anyways, it's angled so that way you can stand on the ground and, and get you a nice solid dead blow. And when you pair it with the protector... And it's all metal, too. It's all metal. It's like some sort of military and like industrial-grade steel. And then they weld it all together, and then they put a bunch of like metal slag in it. Mm -hmm. It's got a... And it's so like once it hits, it doesn't bounce. So yeah. it'll just hit and stop. Uh, but um, like once they're like, like you pair that with the protector, man, and you can you can drive down some posts pretty far. Yeah, and like, pretty easily too. Pretty easily, just, like even if you're, you just, don't even have to like slam it. You just pick it up and let it go for the vinyl. Yeah, yeah. But I'm also talking about for like wood posts too. Like you've never been on a concrete job on a wood job with me, and so like you've never actually seen like. That thing in full and like full, full send mode. on send mode where you're trying to get it down six inches and it's like and you're over here like, oh, man, that's never going to work. And you try it. and You're like, holy shit. Like that worked like a dream. Um, But uh, so this is going to be another like military grade plastic polymer. I don't know what it is, but it's they, like a Delrin. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. It feels and acts and, you know, seems like Delrin, which is like, it's it's basically what cutting boards are made out of. That's right. More that's or less. what yeah. I thought it was. It's uh, super easy to mill, um, works really well on CNC machines, but like, unlike standard plastics, uh, it doesn't bend or give or anything like that uh, i got it's you. also really used for I a lot of you. applications because it's a uh, low friction oh, okay yeah all right yeah so i used to um make i uh, used a longboard and off topic but used to make sliding pucks for my gloves yeah where we do like mm -hmm. free riding and stuff um, i used to make the pucks for them when they would wear down out of just delrin i'd buy on ebay nice yeah mm. i didn't know that you used a longboard yeah yeah it's pretty cool Learn something new every day. You like the dogs of Z Town. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Learning something new. <laughs> oh man, that is. But no, anyways, hilarious. the uh, this Delrin block does have a little, like, 
and it cut out uh, perfectly fit post for aluminum. It's cut out for wood, and it's even got a rail spot for it, so you can do it after the rails are attached. It's cut out for vinyl. It's cut out for aluminum, and there is a protector mini that only fits aluminum. That is just very oh, that's small. Cool. We don't have that yet, but it was cool and fun to use because they didn't fall off. You know? Yeah, because like if you yeah, because the other one just little on little. Like, small little post like this, and it's two and a half big. inches. Um, I get the two and a half inch post and it's like a seven inch block. So yeah. if you hit it <laughs> just anywhere on center. not center, it's like bloop, flies right off. But uh no, I mean, I've uh so this is my second protector and I still have the first one. Um, but I used and abused that first one without the thumper for three years with just a uh, uh, 15 pound sledgehammer. And it's got a little bowl to it, but yeah. other than that, I haven't cracked it. Uh, you know, I haven't broke it, and I have put that thing through some hell, man. Uh, yeah. But those are uh, two of our uh, favorite things for vinyl. It's going to be the protector and the thumper. As always, the equalizer uh, is by far my like my most favorite tool out of any of them. Yeah. Um. But uh. No, let's see. And one other feature that we didn't go over of the thumper. Oh yeah. It's so the new on ones. the end of the thumper, I don't know if there's new or old models or anything, mm -hmm. but the one that we have. Um, yeah. So our, our new hire, he thought it was a hand grip, and it does mm. work really well. Kind of, you know, not to slide your hand if you're out there sweating yeah. in the middle of summer or whatever it may be. But um, there are four little notches. Of course, he thought it was a hand grip. <laughs> Oh Listen, God, that boy! <laughs> but no, uh, so there are four little notches that run up the handle apparatus of the of the hammer. I don't know what you would call that, but uh, you set the mallet part of the hammer on the ground, and up the thing there are notches, and each one is four spacing. It's 11, 12, 13, and 14 for your bottom rail spacing. And it's just convenient. So if you are knocking it down, you just tap, 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 and then set it on the ground. Okay, we're good. I'm not going to be digging it, but it's not going to be too big of a gap. Wonderful, isn't it? Like, it's a little heavy to carry around, but it sure does beat Pull your tape measure out, get it down on the ground, making sure he doesn't fold up on you. You just so set it down on the ground. It's like, oh, I'm good. Next, yeah. I took uh, I took I took a quick second out of my time yesterday when I was uh, setting heights and everything, and um, I actually took an off cut from a picket that was about an inch wide, and I took the same idea of how we use the thumper. And I was like, I don't want to carry this 35 pound hammer to check everything. And I also don't want to pull the tape measure off and open it up you know okay, what? and then put it back. So I took a picket and I marked it with a Sharpie. So it's super bright and super obvious. You know what? 12, 13 and 14. I saw that. And I, I, just I kept moving saw it. that rip picket today. And I was like, why the hell is there four marks? Like an inch. <laughs> part with the sharpie on that fucking ticket i was like it's i didn't 12, 13, do that 14. i was like i was like what the hell i didn't think it, like anything about it. i had completely forgotten about it and yeah. then you just say that that is hilarious yeah because it weighed like nothing and i, mean, I could yeah. just toss it to the next thing and throw it away at the end of it all and like halfway through it it like snapped up towards the top and i'm holding it like down here but it worked perfect dude it worked great <laughs> and it was so much faster than pulling on a tape measure or yeah. So much easier than carrying a fucking thumper. Yeah, <laughs> when I didn't yeah. need one. <laughs> yeah, because you don't need it with the Kings Plus. You're never ever no. going to be. And especially at a, after a demo where you've got yeah, where you got giant holes, a ton of holes in that yeah. whole yard. There was a lot of things that that the client did want us to remove. So there was like a bunch of nasty old dead bushes and stuff in the back that um that we had removed with she the, had a shitload of cannolis. Yeah. I don't know the names of plants. I'm not an arborist or anything. Uh, yeah, she got yeah. a lot of them. She even still has them all to... around her house. She has like a hornet's nest in that one up by the. Uh, oh yeah, that one up by the power meter. Yeah, where you installed the post at? How was that? Oh, <laughs> Did I made him do or anything. I made him get up on the ladder and he put <laughs> <laughs> he put the ladder in the middle of the candle lilies and I was like, oh shit! I was like, bro, be careful. There's hornets down there. He was like, 
And I still got to get up there. I was like, well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I still got to get up there. Yes. <laughs> I was like, look, look, look. The plus side, the plus side, it's cold as hell today. You have a sweatshirt on. You have long pants. You're good. He's yeah. like, yeah, that's true. But if I do get stung, then I'm going to get stung on my neck or my face. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, you got a point. You got a point. But hey, look, look, look. You got a nice vantage point. You're up like 10 foot in the air. Yeah, you, you can, can see actually before see them. before they get to you. <laughs> You'll be all I'm right. Just, the thing that's going through my head right now is if he's up on the ladder and they start coming out. Oh, him, this was an actual conversation between us too. Like, crying, I know, but my the thing that's going through my head that I don't think he thought about was if he's up on the ladder, you're gonna have to come down. He's gonna have to climb down the <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight through them. <laughs> oh, he's already kind of awkward on the ladder sometimes. Oh, he is deathly scared of ladders. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, it, it, kill this it was just me and him there that He's day because the ladder trying to run from a wasp. That was the day that it was raining, and we only got that one post drove. So that was the only one that we got drove. That's all, you did. That's all we did. Yeah, it was so like, like you had so 10 like, minutes of sunshine, yeah. and then it just was torrential downpour right after. So like there wasn't even like a string line set up. So like it got up in the air and like held it. I was like, you know what? Run that thing six is like in the ground. Let's just see what they do. And I backed up like four or five, <laughs> four or five feet. I was like, "Are we gonna?" All right, all right. Are you good? Like they didn't fly, and then I plumbed it up, and we drove it the rest of the way. And he was like, "So what would have happened if they would have came out?" I was like, "Well, I would have ran. I don't know what you would have done, but um, I would have ran." Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh man, good times, good times, uh, fun times. Got me crying over here. <laughs> <laughs> and like the best part about it is is like sometimes I tell stories to people who weren't there and I'll like tell them what I was thinking, but I didn't actually say like I said all of this to him. I bet, I bet. because as soon as he threw the ladder down, he was like, Are those yellow jackets? I was like, No, nah, those are hornets. He was like, Is that isn't that worse than a yellow? I was like, Yeah. Those are worse. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know where the nest is. And I'm not just going to go killing this lady's like whole giant garden spraying wasp and nest spray to find out where the nest is. So we're going to go wild with it. You just go. You, you got pants and a sweatshirt on, right? Yep. It's already <laughs> cold. They're probably sleeping. They're hibernating. But hey, Winter man, time. we got it done and nobody was harmed. <laughs> nobody was stung. Nobody fell off a ladder. I did get a good laugh out of it. It was it was quite hilarious, um, but uh, we haven't like a good laughter. In there. Oh my god, hard day at work. We haven't even thrown out our socials uh, yet. Oh, damn. Um, but um, if you want to follow us, go to the Gatekeepers no, Pod. Just, oh, just Gatekeeper, just GatekeeperPodcast dot com. Gatekeeper, go, go right here. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Right here, right there. Bum, bum, bum. Go right there. Go right there. Um, right there. you guys can give us a like, uh, subscribe, a share. You could donate for the cause if you want to, because again, this is funded by the old wallet. Mm. Um, other than that, you got anything else? Nothing else I could think of. So, uh, for everybody out there building fences, build them strong, build them straight, and build them sturdy. <laughs> Thank you.